Recording in progress. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Good morning, everyone. And let's just give um, three three minutes for people to check in, and then we'll start the meeting.
Welcome, welcome everyone um, to the Irish Tech Challenge Information Session. Um, I'm Hanguli Patsy and I'll be seeing you through proceedings today. Um, I hope wherever you are, it's, it's warm and you are comfortable uh, because we're about to show you something that might change your lives. Uh, the Irish Tech Challenge is a wonderful opportunity that we hope all of you will be willing to take on. So without wasting any further time, we'll get going. Um, but we will be letting people in as we go. So um, just play with us as we move. So just so that you can get a sense of what to expect today, um, we've got an agenda, sort of like a running order of how we will go about it today. The first thing that we will do, of course, is just welcome all of you. But we will also focus on introductions that will come from the stakeholders that are bringing to you the Irish Tech Challenge. As you can see, they are listed there. Then we'll give you a brief on what the challenge is actually about. Uh, we'll then also uh, allow you to ask questions and then we'll close. In the interim, please do share your names on the chat so maybe we'll also get acquainted with you. Some of you will call you by name and so on so, so that we get acquainted better. But thank you all for, for joining us today. Uh, thank you very much. So. Without wasting any other time, as I said, we will be recording uh, so that we get a clearer sense of all the questions that you have that, uh, that can help us design our program even better. So without wasting more time, I'll give this time to the enter head of enterprise development at Simulokong, Edward Gumbo, who will then introduce all the stakeholders that are bringing to you the Irish Tech Challenge. Thanks. Thank you so much, Hungry, and uh, a very warm welcome to this information day uh, for the Irish Tech Challenge, South Africa. Uh, this is the second year it's actually going. I think Hungry will provide, I think, an overview of what this challenge is about and what it seeks to achieve. Um, I'm excited that um, I think at count now we have 41 participants that have, jo that have joined this call. Um, and still counting. So thank you so much for joining this call. Um, I have a simple task just to introduce uh, the panelists. I think Hangwe has introduced myself. So um, what I represent, I represent Simolo Hong Digital Innovation Precinct, which is um, the digital innovation hub for Vets University, where our aim is to work and create world-leading African digital entrepreneurs mainly focusing on the digital innovation space. Um, I'm not going to give you much detail there. Um, I see our partners. I will hand over to Paul uh, to give uh, an overview, just an introduction first, and then an overview from your side. Uh, Paul is actually from the uh, project sponsor, which is the embassy of ICE to South Africa. Thank you. Over to you, Paul. Thanks, Edwell. I hope I can be heard properly. It's okay? Great. Yes, we um, can hear oh, you. Great, thanks very much. Good to, good to check. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Paul Dean. I am the Trade and Education Councillor in the Embassy of Ireland. Uh, hi to everyone on the call from our partners, but particularly the entrepreneurs and people who are interested in this call uh, in this pro programme. And thanks for taking part in the call. Thanks to, hi to Gabriel and Rafilway who already introduced yourselves on the chat. And I want to say a big special hello to, I see Elle Marie and I also see uh, Sabello, our alumni from last year, a very warm hello to you guys uh, from our, our last year's program. Um, I, I, I won't speak long, I just want to say two or three things. Um, one, this, this Irish Tech Challenge is an initiative of, of, of the Embassy of Ireland uh, in close partnership with the South African government, the Department of Science and Innovation. And we've got a great team in Edwell and his team in Simolahong Project and Jesus in his team in Dog Patch Labs in Dublin, um, you know, kind of coordinating this program. Um, we, 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 I suppose just the origin, 30 seconds, I suppose, on the origin of this whole program, because I know people want to get down to brass tacks and find out how do I apply, where do I, where do I, how do I make sure I get, I get successfully into the program and so on, but just where it comes from. We, we have a long history of links and friendships between Ireland and South Africa. 
everywhere except in the rugby field. Um, and maybe after after the rugby match, we'll stay friends too. You never know. Um, so so it is a real priority in South Africa around using technology and entrepreneurship to drive growth and employment and address the big challenges of not just South Africa faces, but the world faces in climate change and, and, and sustainable living and so on. In our case in Ireland, we have a travel and interesting history from really a difficult background uh, of you know economic hardship um, that you may surprise you for a European country, high unemployment and immigration, Fast forward to today, we are one of the world's biggest global tech hubs, uh, and we have used innovation on entrepreneurship to help drive that change. We've got, you know, Facebook, Google, IBM, Apple, all of the big tech players have th their regional bases, often international bases in Ireland. Matched with that, we've got a really strong startup ecosystem that Jesus and his team at Dogpatch are living proof of. Um, and that's a startup ecosystem that's really welcoming and inviting and, and collaborative. And I think hopefully El Marie and Sabello would, would testify to that in their experience last year. Um, and so it's a natural point, entry point, if you're a South African entrepreneur with a startup, you're looking internationally. Ireland's a natural entry point uh, because of those reasons. Also because we are members of the European Union, we are English speaking, we're in a similar time zone to you in South Africa, which helps a lot. And also actually we have a visa free status. You don't need a visa to go to Ireland. So all of those reasons mean, you know, we want to share that expertise that Ireland's built up with South African tech entrepreneurs. Uh, and we want you to can look at Ireland as an entry point uh, to, to Europe. And so we're, the shared priorities we have with Department of Science and Innovation and TIA around supporting, um, uh, you know, particularly not just, but particularly, you know, women uh, and youth led entre enterprises, enterprises from people from historical disadvantage uh, to access those international networks is a big, big priority for us. And we're really excited this year to be work working on the program again. And we look forward to your applications, hopefully, uh, and to seeing you, hopefully some of you, the successful five on the final program. So look, that's that's enough, I think, for me. I'll pass back to you, Edwell, and happy to answer any, I suppose, Ireland specific questions uh, in due course during the during the, the program. Thank you. Thanks so much, Paul, for, uh, for, for that welcome and uh, an overview of um, Ireland, actually, even highlighting the relationship between the two countries, Ireland and South Africa. Um, uh, pretty interesting. Okay, uh, I'll move on to, uh, let me just check. I haven't seen anyone from the Department of Science and Innovation. Let me just confirm. Uh, maybe they've joined later. Anyone from the Department of Science and Innovation? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I, I, I think maybe they may join a bit later on. Maybe just to talk about the Department of Science and Innovation as well as the Technology Innovation Agency. I got an, an apology to say they will not be able to attend this meeting. So the Department of Science and Innovation um, is a partner in this project, just like the Technology Innovation Agency, which is an entity that is owned by the Department of Science and Innovation. Um, where um, it's in pursuit of that goal, where it's a bilateral engagement between the two countries uh, and the department is mandated to pursue science and innovation, support startups that are, um, have innovative products, have innovative solutions. Um, so those are some of our partners. Um, and then I'll move on to, to the uh, other partner, which is Dopech Labs, all the way from, from Dublin, represented by HESAS. Uh, I know Hesas you said you wanted to share a screen. Uh, we'll hand over to you, sir. Hi, guys. I'm super excited to, to be here with you guys today. Really looking forward to the challenge and getting to the, the, the chosen five, as Paul mentioned. But this is actually an initiative before I jump into Dogpatch Labs, very close to my heart. You know, um, I was born in Africa, left from Africa, uh, grew up in Portugal, and then settled in Ireland. And I always believe that there's great synergies between Africa and Europe and making those platforms and creating that actual bridge is, is necessary. And at this point in time, more than ever, I think Africa can play a part in tech. So highlighting uh, the growth potential of the continent, I think is absolutely key. So with the embassy, DSIT are uh, doing quite well. Here is just really catalyzing the two nations and the sponsorship that they put at the table to actually make this happen is, I think is much appreciated, it is welcome. Hopefully you can build on that over the next years. One of the things that Odom Pashlabs, I think Paul already mentioned, 
with entrepreneurial ecosystem at the heart. Our mission is really to accelerate uh, the innovation, uh, help entrepreneurs achieve their dreams locally in Ireland, also globally, right? Uh, adult Fashion Island has been very successful and created an ecosystem with the brand leading figures. As probably you see some of them here, Duchess of the Success and, and the Royals, uh, a plus through here. We are not, not only for startups, but also that bridge that pastoral Ireland as an entrepreneur ecosystem for Europe itself. But what I want to highlight uh, for anyone joining this uh, challenge here is where we're centered and, and how Ireland actually emerges one of the top tech ecosystems in Europe, right? So you can see here, that's where we're based on Bash Labs, we're across, you name it, all the tech companies are here, Paul already mentioned that, but not only tech companies, we have professional service providers that are really active on, on policy. Uh, we also have uh, experimentation areas, right, where smart cities are on double as well. So there's a lot of things coming together really to uh, empower the entrepreneurial ecosystem to really catalyze entrepreneurs, get them going, and, and connect them to, to the right people, right stakeholders. We're known for one degree separation. So within uh, a call, you actually can get reach the stakeholder. And if you depend on how fast you walk within half an hour, you can walk the land of IFSC, you can talk to all the tech providers, you need to talk to legal firms, industry bodies. Um, so we're really looking forward to showcasing the experience. Uh, I think the past participants of last year's challenge might be able to highlight as well uh, that connectivity, that welcomeness, that warmness the island has uh, outside of the Guinness as well and, and the good cracks that, <laughs> that Ireland is, is known for. The Gold Parts Labs is we know only focus in Dublin. We also connect all the regions. So you can see here Galway, Cork, uh, the likes of Ivo uh, Orobas and Belfast, uh, and Galway. So it's not only coming to Dublin, you're going to have access to a whole of Ireland depending on the ecosystem they want to tap in. So if you want to tap into the likes of Agtech, you might say, okay, let's go uh, to, to the South more, or even the likes of Health Tech, you want to tap into the FinTech area. You might potentially be more concentrated in Dublin uh, and support at that. So we'll be able to really connect to the right ecosystem very, very quickly and to the right people to have the right conversations as well. That's what uh, we, we power ourselves as a, the next work, and we're very proud of that. Of that. Let's put some numbers as well uh, on the papers so you guys get a bit of a sense of size for people that don't know Dog Patch Labs. Uh, we now have over 2,600. Uh, startups in the portfolio. So they also synergies in startups. We all learn for each other is a constant journey in a startup. So being able to bring founders together uh, to share experiences, grow together as well when it, there's business synergies uh, is a key of, of the work that we actually do here as well. But with that in numbers, um, I would like to also just share this slide and, and it's not dead by PowerPoints. I just want to give you guys a feel of what you'd be able to achieve um, and tap into the week that you're going to be here now, potentially after as a form part of the ecosystem of the Irish Tech Challenge. So Dog Park Labs, we run the National Accelerator uh, run by the government. We put it up around 100k into a startup, at, at least to 10 uh, every year. And you can see the alumni keeps growing. The other uh, areas that Dog Park Labs are very active as well on is policy, shaping the policy, be it domestic or international now with as well, this Irish Tech Challenge and see how we can connect ecosystems and make things happen globally. And also every Friday, we we, first, we call it First Fridays, every month. we do run uh, that kind of bringing everyone under one roof, that high energy tempo of a meetup, right? Uh, that's for successful startups get great mentors. We go on Google, uh, you name it, HubSpot, uh, likes of Microsoft, everyone on the one roof really, really trying to you know, make things happen. And of course, the youth is the future, right? So uh, we are running as well a patch accelerator, whereby you bring the youth uh, with the ideas uh, of, of tomorrow, they're going to power the, uh, the, the next big companies. And we have a dedicated path for, for, for that. Um, um, you know, accelerator. We can see uh, this is just some some problems, some numbers. The funding has been amazing as well. Uh, what we've really been able to unlock uh, for startups in our ecosystem. Um, so, but I, 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 we, I'll save a bit for later as we go through uh, the program as well. So you guys get a feel of uh, what we're about as well, and, and the mentors, the access, uh, the, the business opportunities that we'll be able to unlock for five participants. Uh, my name. 
uh, is Jesus. Um, and feel free to reach me at uh, this email address here, but I'm also on all the social handles if you want to contact me directly. With that, I'll pass it back to Ed and the team. I'm really excited uh, to get this journey going. Uh, and let's let's make it happen. Let's create that bridge between uh, South Africa and, and Dublin initially, and the whole of Ireland and Europe. Thank you so much, Jesus, uh, for that overview. Um, we're really honored to have partnered with Dr. Labs uh, in Dublin, Ireland, for us to, to roll out and implement and project manage this uh, this challenge. Um, and then I will then hand over to, to Hangui to take us through um, just a high level overview of what this challenge is about. I think we we'll want to have more interactions in terms of the question and answer. Um, and the idea for this uh, information session is to give you the information so that by the time you apply, there is completeness of your application. You know, we've done quite a number of challenges called for startup, you know, acceleration, where it's so sad that you see some amazing startups not making the grade because on the com because of the completeness of the of, of the application, maybe some something missing, you're not actually ticking all the boxes. So we're here to answer your questions. Uh, even post this session, uh, there is an email address that Hango will share that you can actually uh, reach to us um, if you need more information. But over to you, Hangui, to just give us an overview of what the tech challenge is about. Yes, thanks. Uh, thanks, Edward. So I think it's important that we start off by just understanding what the Irish tech challenge is. Um, the previous slide was sort of like trying to show a scrum between Ireland the DSI in South Africa and us as, as, as Tim Lokong as we go into this, this rugby World Cup. But we've turned that rivalry into a partnership. And at the core of this partnership, it is trying to foster connections between the two ecosystems, but also identify startups that we will work with year on year. As you heard Paul and Edward speak, there's people who have been through this challenge before. Uh, so you will hear from them as well. But um, that's what the Irish Tech is trying to do, to assist you to scale globally and get opportunity to see what your business can do outside of just South Africa. And ideally, we also want that to be part of your growth and development as we try to build more tech startups in South Africa. So we want them to grow and the only way they grow is when they can expand. So that's why it's in it for you. But, uh, and the, the small part or the small benefit of this tech challenge is this 10,000 grant grant funding. And I'm showing the premier seed as the big part, but it's actually the small part because there's other opportunities that probably offer much more money for you. But at the core of this one is this opportunity to then be part of a group of collaborative partners that are trying to assist you to, to grow and develop your business. But then the question that always comes up is who must apply? We really are welcoming all tech sectors, but there's a particular interest with those that are listed there, clean tech, clean tech. But all this information is also available on the website. So I just want that if you can hear it from our words to your ears and maybe it can land differently from what you would read on. At the core of it, this is who we want to apply all tech sectors, but clean tech, clean tech, circular economies, that tech and so on are the ones that we are particularly interested in. And you must be post revenue. So at least don't treat some commercial viability or you've tried to organize your business and get it up and running and they've got different uh, challenges that you're facing. And I'll explain why you must apply in the next slide, but these are the kind of businesses that we're looking for. Even if you're pre-revenue, but have a developed IP, or, or prototype or intellectual property, that's what we're looking for. And also addressing one of the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. This is just a function of, if anyone is solving a problem in South Africa, you believe and trust me that you are solving one of the 17 uh, Sustainable Development Goals, no hunger, no poverty, increasing and reducing inequality and so on. So you can check it out as well. Now, lots of trying to be keen, trying to be exclusive with this, with this and this, this is something that is so important for you guys to note that we want women led, youth led businesses, and people that may be coming from what is termed historically disadvantaged communities because we want this challenge to be as inclusive as possible. So, you are the perfect person to apply. So, do not ever think you're not the one, you are definitely the one. 
uh, as long as you're 51% owned, your business is owned by 51% by a South African national. But key to it is that you're also a founder that will be available full time, or at least one of your founders is available full time. But let me not belabor the point because the key thing is also to hear what you guys say. And by saying, why should you apply? Because that is a very important question. So it's collaborative, different from other challenges, we are being collaborative. So it's Embassy of Ireland that has built partnerships with Doc Patch, as you saw in Ireland, with Tim Lohong, with the DSI. So that's key to a good challenge that can assist you and your business. We definitely have a focus on innovation um, because we want to promote technology in South Africa. Uh, technology in South Africa can only really be strengthened if it can also be global in its application. So this is thing of thinking, uh, low, uh, being local, but thinking globally. So that's part of what we are doing as the Irish Tech Challenge. And of course, like I said earlier, we want to be as inclusive as possible. That is why you should apply. And we also want definitely to assist you with the global expansion support. And I think Paul explained just how strong the Irish Tech expertise are to assist this challenge. Um, and we understand as a tech business in South Africa with low sharing, with everything. So we've got a good understanding of those difficulties, which makes it why you should apply because we will assist you there. But as I said, this is information that you can find um, online for more information. Uh, as long as you heard it from my voice, which I think is a good voice, maybe it can land differently on your ears. So that can also help me. But if you don't believe me, because I see sometimes we are not believable, right? I think it's important that we also listen to those that we take challenge before. And this way you need to open your ears to hear as much as possible. So we have here Memeza. We'll start with Memeza and Almeri will take us through her experience. We also have MLX Ventures and Savela will take us through her experience. And then Ambani Africa, I think I saw Isabella is here as well. So they can take us through how they experienced the Irish Tech Challenge last year in its pilot year. So uh, I'll hand over to Almeri and you can take us through your experiences with the Irish Tech. Morning, everyone. Um, thank you so much, Edwell, um, Hungry, and um, hi, Paul. And nice to see some of the other um, cohort from last year on the call. So thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to tell some of these new inspiring entrepreneurs how great um, our experience was last year and what it has meant for us as a social enterprise. Um, I'm Almarie, I'm co-founder of Memeza. Um, Tuliam Tetwa, um, the, also the co-founder founder of Memeza is not here today, but um, we're a female-led organization that fights crime in South Africa. So what we do is we provide security technology and innovation to vulnerable communities, to gender-based violence victims, and those people who don't generally have access to um, innovation and to technology to make them safe. And uh, we were lucky enough last year to, to win and to, to go with Paul and the team of the Irish Embassy to visit Ireland. Um, and I must say, it was such a great opportunity. So for Mameza, we had two major outputs of that trip. Um, so firstly, of course, our focus was on finding Irish partners um, through Dog Patch Labs and some of the other you know, um, entrepreneurs that they've linked us to. And also we wanted to investigate and find out how does Ireland uh, fight gender-based violence through technology. So we had those two goals in mind. And um, through that trip, we have partnered with uh, one of the organizations that works with Dog Patch, uh, uh, Dog Patch Labs, Hello SOS. And we're working with them on their next generation technology, which will hopefully help us safeguard women in South Africa in the hotel industry. So that was a great take out from that trip. And another very critical element for us as part of that um, trip that we made was to visit some of the Irish police stations on the ground. And there it's called the Garda, Guardians of Safety, and to understand how their community safety organizations works and how do they fight crime and gender-based violence. And we took those learnings and we actually provided a report back to our government partners that we work with um, from a uh, you know, community safety point of view and to help and improve the local policies. So we had two uh, you know, really 
um, ideas of going one for our business, obviously, and to see where we can partner and where we can grow technology. But also we wanted to bring some learnings back to South Africa. But what we also found is that we also took a lot of learnings to Ireland. So we shared a lot of insights with, um, you know, the local police there that they then used to, to help do better policing there. So it was really a fantastic collaborative experience. And through the very well thought out interactive engagements that the Irish Embassy and you know, DSI and the guys that we went with helped set up, it really allowed us to tap into the entrepreneurial ecosystem there um, through Dog Patch Labs and some of the other um, you know, partners. So the cherry on top obviously was, uh, you know, finding opportunities and new business growth and investment opportunities between the, also the local group of entrepreneurs that went with us. Um, so you learn so much from the same group of people that are in the same roadmap where you are as an entrepreneur and trying to grow a technology-based business. Um, so today through interventions like the Irish Embassy does and through the DSI and TIA and all these partners that he's involved. Mameza as an organization has been able to reach over 900,000 gender-based violence victims and over the last you know five years we've created over 3,000 income opportunities for youth in South Africa and we can only do this because of Paul and you know organizations and programs like this that allow us to take innovation further to learn about technology to go over to other countries and to come back and to see how we can implement that in South Africa so I just want to say Paul and team as Mameza we are very willing to go with you again to chaperone the new team um, but yeah it was a great experience guys so don't don't not apply apply and please make use of this wonderful experience you will never be sorry thank you so much to everyone that gave Mameza the opportunity to go Thank you so much, Elmeri. Um, we'll give the time to Sabelo to maybe make additional points. Sabelo from MLX Ventures. Yeah, awesome, thank you so much. Super, thank you so much, everybody. Um, so yeah, my name is Sabelo. Um, and yeah, I just want to um, share a little bit about uh, the experience um, in, in Ireland as far as uh, the, 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 as part of the Irish Tech Challenge. Um, it was uh, pretty much transformative um, in more ways than one. Um, I was in a fintech startup at the time, um, and now we're uh, we've kind of evolved into a venture studio, um, uh, literally, you know, kind of participating more in the venture capital space, uh, fast approaching a close of our fund one. Um, and that is only as a direct result of exposure. Um, I think what tends to happen is that, you know, we kind of, you know, live in a particular bubble. Um, and see things from um, uh, our kind of point of view, our context, our experiences, but being in pretty much one of the R&D centers of the world, um, you get to see just how much uh, uh, capacity uh, one can, 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 can leverage from uh, decent partnerships. In fact, I um, was working late last night, so early hours of this morning, I was having a chat with um, uh, a friend I met at uh, Temple Bar, go figure, um, who's part of a VC um, community um, that I'm a part of. So um, it's, 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 it's really cool to uh, maintain the relationships. I mean, um, an incredible experience, especially at Dogpatch Labs. I still attend First Fridays. I'm still in touch uh, also with Jake, even though he's, he's moved on to um, uh, uh, other uh, opportunities. And I think the single greatest um takeaway i can i can i can um, you know kind of quantify really um not just in rands and cents uh, or euro um is is the network um that you have not just um um with the, the, the folks that you get to meet with uh whilst you're there but with the likes of almeri um uh, the, the, the 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 fellow alumni um we still have events um just incredible people so um i'll definitely encourage everyone to apply because if i don't stop speaking now i can speak until the sun goes down so it's a, a, a really transformative experience um uh, and the money never hurts either No, thanks. Thanks for that, Sabel. Um, we'll give the time to Isabel. I'm probably, I saw you were here, so you might as well add on to what Elmarie and Sabelo said. Um, hi, everybody. So I didn't physically go um, to Ireland, um, but Ngundi, our CEO, was part of the, the project itself, and she got to go to Ireland. But it did help us expand into our international languages. So Ambani is a language learning app. 
and we um, have done all 14 um, of our spoken official languages, and now we've delved into international languages as well. So now we've, uh, we've looked into um, immersing ourselves um, into the, the language of Gaelic, and we're now about to actually um, be launching our app next week um, with uh, as this beautiful <laughs> dinner that we're having. So um, we're in the process of, of, of redoing everything um, and hopefully we'll be a bit better than where we were. Um, and then also um, now have a, a new board member who's uh, part of the Iris um, Tech Challenge. And they're also helping us expand into the international market as well. So that's just where we are as, as a brand, as a company. But definitely the IHA Challenge has given us a broader perspective and allowed us to, um, I, 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 you know, um, expand ourselves um, even further. But yes, um, guys, please do um, be a part of it because it really does um, impact um, in so many ways. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Isabella. Thank you very much, Elmarie, and thanks to Sabelo. Um, I hope you guys can hear me clearly, because now it's the time that you guys can speak. If you've got questions, put them on the chat. You can also raise your hand and ask the questions you need. I will also still ask Elmarie, Isabella, and Sabelo to respond, but also all the other stakeholders that are on the call can give you a response that you need. Um, so if you guys have got questions, anything that has maybe bothered you as you've tried to apply, anything, you can raise them here and we can respond to them. You can also put them on the chat. Uh, so you can go ahead. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Hangui. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Loud and clear. Thank you very much, sir. Um, my question actually was, was on the post um, pre-revenue because I think um, that is where I got stuck. So I have actually uh, developed two innovations. One has been funded, um, but we haven't generated any revenue as yet. And then the other one is in the ad tech space which um, we have developed an IP or, or minimum viable product, but we haven't been funded for that, right? But it has been actually tested. So what I needed to know is um, if, if, if I'm gonna go with the EdTech one, which has not yet been funded, but we have pilot tested the MVP, does it actually put me in a disadvantaged position? Because I think what has been confusing on my end was the pre-revenue. Does it necessarily mean that you've been funded, but you have not generated revenue, or it's okay even if you haven't been funded, but you have a minimum viable product, which is the IP? That's one thing that I actually wanted to understand. So I'll, I'll ask for the ones who've got hands. Then we'll take like three at a time. I can see some on the chat as well. So I'll take Bungungos is one. I'll go to Rifilio Lidija. Then I'll go to Edison as the ones that I will be checking on the people who've got their hands up. And then I'll come to the ones on the chat. So you can still increase the ones on the chat. Um, Paul Edwell, he says, do be preparing your responses. I'll also summarize them once we've gotten all three hands questions. Uh, Rifilio? Uh, good good afternoon and uh, thank you, sir. Uh, my question is around the, the process and the selection. Well, this the selection process. I see that we obviously have to make a submission online. Is there going to be an opportunity to make an oral presentation, uh, you know, against what we've submitted? Or is it is, is will the selection purely be based on the submissions uh, that we'll be making online? Thank you. Thanks for that, Rufilwe. Um, Edison? Yes, um, good morning, how are you? Um, my question revolves around um, the, um, the eligibility to which you said 1% uh, has to be uh, South African. Uh, does that mean also the, the in terms of application, it has to be a South African who apply they say uh, in as much as the company might be on 51% South African, but does it mean that 
the application is to be completed by South African. And also I did notice that on the application form itself, uh, it asks for an ID number. So that does mean that our South African, or uh, as a South African, I should be the one applying. Can you just clarify on that one? Okay, I'll take those three questions. You can still raise your hands and then I'll open the floor to Paul, Edwell, and he says to maybe respond. Bonginkos, he had asked around, um, he's got a, the idea around post revenue. He's got an MVP, is it a disadvantage if he uses the one that isn't funded that's still in the pilot phase? Rafilo had asked around, uh, will there be an opportunity for all presentations? Um, and Edson is asking about the eligibility, should he be 51% South African owned for application? So you guys can decide who's gonna to respond to that. Yeah, thanks, Angu. I'll let Edson answer, well, sorry, answer in the first instance on the technical criteria and application and happy to come in on anything more. Uh, broadly on the on the Irish side or 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 as useful. So Edwell, I'll, I'll let you lead on some of those. Um, I, I'll have a, um, a, a go at, at, um, at the questions. Um, Here's us uh, jumping and uh, as well as Paul, you can also add to it. Firstly, the question of, of pre-revenue to say if you 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 have already mentioned that you have, I think a few startups, um, one of them is pre-revenue. Uh, so the question is, will it put you at a disadvantage? So while we're looking for post revenue startups, but we are saying, if you have a strong case, you are at a free revenue with um, a developed IP, a registered IP, which is value on, or, or on its own, you're able to use that uh, as, the, as a strength for your application. Because we're aware that there are some uh, tech startups that might like maybe you've created, like maybe already have users, maybe you offer it as, as a freemium uh, version, for example, um, you have not generated revenue. So we want to exclude you based on that. But uh, the assessment will look at the strength of your startup. How does it align with the objectives of the call? Does it solve? Uh, challenges that I think Hanwi did mention. What are the SDGs that you are solving? I think that's the first one. And then is it able to scale? What is the scalability of it? Uh, the second question that I picked up was on the issue of oral presentation. So um, your, your first application, which is your first window is paper-based application, which is an online submission. Those will be screened to select, let's call it the semi-finalists. And then you will have like maybe the top 15 that will then be interviewed and have oral presentations. Um, and then on the question of, uh, is it, uh, does it have to be South African owned? I think it's, it, it, um, Hungry did highlight that we're looking at, uh, it has to be at least 51% owned by, uh, by South African. Um, so, in terms of who applies, I think it's, um, it's not that important, provided it meets the requirement of it being 51% owned by a South African. Um, Paul, you can, you can jump in if I you want to add to some. Or has as well. That's well, yeah, that's well covered from my end, Edwell, thanks. Okay, yeah, thanks, I think the Team did respond, and then we will add more responses as we go. I see some questions are also repeating on the chat as well. Uh, I'll start with the one that speaks to 51% owned. Uh, we just want South African nationals, but we will be obviously looking at those who are from previously disadvantaged areas and also who are as those who are encouraged to apply. So uh, that's part of what is important, but we want people to be from South Africa. So that application should be coming from a South African national as key to expanding. But I think for that to make sense is that we're also planning on expanding this Irish Tech Challenge to other African countries, depending on how well they develop. That's the big goal, that's the ambition. So that's something to take note of as well as we grow. Um, and I think the questions around the pitch deck guidelines. So I think key to it is you can email Irish Tech Challenge at timlukong.joburg and we'll send you a full brief on how that can look. But the idea is that you should have developed your business over time 
such that you are post revenue now, such that you've submitted pitch decks before, and we want to then use it to analyze your business from the problem solution to the product that you are delivering, the traction, the marketing strategy, and so on. So those are some of the elements that you need to take into consideration. But if you want very specifics, please definitely email Irish Tech Challenge at mlokong.jovac, and then we will respond to you as well with, with additional information that you may need. Something else that came up was the pre-acceleration and the showcase week. So the pre-acceleration will be online, uh, but we'll communicate with that once we've shortlisted our team. Uh, but the showcase day, showcase week, the 20th to the 24th of November, while we settle on trying to find an actual date, will be at Timulukhom in in Joburg, in Ramfontein, but more details will follow on that once we've so, so shortlisted and have everybody ready to come and join us. So that's something to note. And the people that can travel, we do, as you heard, Isabella did say that she traveled, she didn't travel, the founder traveled. So ideally we want one founder per startup to be the one that travels, uh, but we'll also sort out some of the finer details once we've shortlisted there. Um, and I think that about answers what I saw on the chat, but the team can also respond on the chat if there's specifics that you would want to respond to. Um, then I'll take the hands, I'll start with Paul to make maybe additional comments, then come to Lisedi and then Shamra. Paul? Just to add, Hang, what you said about the, the criteria and uh, beyond being South African owned, just, just to be clear, really clear on that, the, the only criteria in that sense in terms of demographics is South African ownership. It is the case, though, that we particularly welcome and encourage you know, women-owned, black-owned, um, youth-owned uh, enterprises and entrepreneurs from communities of historical disadvantage, but it is not a program solely for those categories. It is that we particularly want to encourage them to attend. We know that the uh, you know, the networks, uh, the women are underrepresented in the tech sector internationally in South Africa, and we know they particularly benefit from, from additional support in terms of it gaining access to networks. But you know, if you are not a women-owned business, please still apply. Uh, a number, good number of our cohort last year were women-founded businesses, but it's not exclusively for. And I know you might be saying you've got Edwell, myself, and Jesus, and it's all men, but just to rest assured, the selection committee has a very strong uh, you know, gender parity, gender balance, uh, and the, the real ambition is to create a welcoming and strong environment for, for all cohorts uh, in, in this program. So just hopefully that, that clarifies that. Thanks, thanks for that addition, Paul. Uh, Lisedi and then Shamran. Hi, um, good morning. Um, I think it's, yes, morning. Um, yes, I just wanted to ask. So we are mainly focusing on the education side of things. Um, we're trying to put in as many as much technology as possible. So robotics and all sorts of things in schools and especially rural areas, or should I say government schools in South Africa. I'm like hearing this thing about um, revenue, et cetera. So I just wanted to say if we would be able to continue in terms of applying for this, because we do kind of pride ourselves in actually getting the young people of South Africa to be in uh, more modern technology, should I say. As a solutions architect myself, I just ended up being doing this job without the help of university because I wasn't able to get to this point with the help of university. And I've realized with South Africa, not everybody can do that. And with Seletu, what we're doing is equipping people with that. So I joined here hoping that there would be some way of helping what we're doing or the cause that we're doing. But now with the, I'm just hearing about the, um, the pre, like uh, like in terms of have we looked at revenue um do we have any revenue yet i just wanted to know where does that put us and if we would be able to continue to apply for this if that's the case thank you <laughs> thanks for that lisa d uh Shamran? hi everyone thanks for having me on the call um I, it's probably it's similar to lisa comment or inquiry I, we're from um, Quinella, bringing women justice, an NGO in South Africa. And I was just wondering, would our NGOs, would they be considered? Um, it's the same with, if we're MPO, NGO, and it's more based on providing um, 
money for the or the communities we work with in South, South Africa or upskilling them in digital rights and bringing justice against gender-based violence um, and conviction rates. I just wanted to know, are NG NPOs considered? Um, yeah, thank you so much. Okay, thanks for that, Shamran. Um, we we'll respond to that. Uh, Sudhir, do you want to come in? Okay, I, I, I suppose not. So I think before I let the team respond, it's important to note that the application process is for you to send to the committee to make the selection. So ideally, is how best you craft your message as a business. We've asked there as well, uh, what is your internationalization strategy is one of our questions in the application form. We've also asked, um, do you, why do you even want to attend to be part of the Irish Tech Challenge? So those are questions that come from the application form that assists the selection committee. So without preempting the work of the selection committee, I think it's important that as entrepreneurs, you put your best foot forward and give the selection committee a problem with how they have to deal with your with your application. But I'll also let the team give 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 a response to, to the questions asked by Lisedi around um, the difficulty that they've had, the supporting young people that might not necessarily be at post revenue yet. How would that be dealt with? Uh, Shamran has also asked a similar kind of question. So, um, Edouard, maybe you want to yeah, make if, some if, if I may, Yeah, if, if I may chip in, uh, I'll actually ask even El Mari um, to, to come in. Because I think the broader question is, do social enterprises qualify? That's what I'm getting. If I have to summarize the question to say, uh, do NGOs, will NGOs be considered? Uh, my directly understanding, if you look at uh, Memeza, for example, um, I think she's here, she can talk, uh, she was one of the five winners last year as a social enterprise. So, so the idea of, of being pre or post revenue, so at pre-revenue, I think you have to understand the journey of uh, entrepreneurial um, development, where this is an acceleration program. We're looking for uh, startups that have commercial viability, commercial potential. And most of those uh, startups are found in startups that are now post-revenue. But they, we are aware that there are some startups that are pre-revenue. They have a developed minimum viable product. They have a prototype. And we are saying we ever would work with that. That's not going to disqualify you. But as how we put it, it will be based on the strength of your submission. As uh, you have seen, one of the alumni from last year, Elmar, is coming from a social enterprise. And um, they ended up getting prized. Elmar, do you want to comment on that in terms of um, your experience as a social enterprise. Yes, thank you, Edwell. Um, no, I mean, Mameza, just to paint a picture, is a social enterprise. So Mameza is a nonprofit organization. And we've also got a PTY side that works together because our market uh, specifically is um, the market that cannot really afford our product. So we have to have this uh, social enterprise approach. And we were approved to, to partake. We are um, 10 years old already. So I suppose, you know, it, takes 10 years in today's life for an, uh, a startup to actually take it to the next level. So although we have been um, in the market for 10 years, we have not um, gone over to a commercial uh, level really by the time we won the, um, you know, the competition. So although we were generating revenue, it wasn't really a fully commercial revenue. And that is what part of the Irish competition has helped us to, um, you know, to move to the next level. So. Definitely, I think social enterprises should apply um, and nonprofits should apply as long as you've got proof of, of some kind of income stream or a good plan to show where you are heading. Thank you very much, Elmarie. I think that gives, well. puts it in, in perspective. That puts it in perspective. So I don't know if there's any more people who want to put their hands up, but I see a couple of questions. One, which I definitely note from Katlao, I think, around feedback, which is a very good feedback from that you are giving us that, uh, oh, it's Kahim Matabu, who's saying that uh, feedback is of utmost importance for founders, for those who will not be successful. 
will there be feedback on where the application failed? So I think it's something that we will note and definitely take into consideration as we do our work. Um, Rumbizao asked if there's a disadvantage if a company has previously been qualified for or won previous Timlokhong challenges. So it's, it's definitely not. The, we also want to use people who've been in some of these spaces before because it assists us with our um, short listing. Uh, also, it means that you've been you've been taken through the fire because entrepreneurship is definitely a tough journey. So that helps. Uh, so it's not a problem. It won't be a disadvantage. Uh, Edwell, maybe you can add more comments on that. I, I wanted to, to, to actually have two comments. The first one is on uh, this being an acceleration program. In your development journey, you could have, you may have gone through maybe boot camps. You could have gone through incubation programs, which were helping you develop your startup to a point where it is today, where it's ready for acceleration. Does that disqualify you? No, actually it puts you at an advantage because you are ready for acceleration. You know, acceleration is at that level where there is market potential, market viability. You are able to be accelerated into new markets. You've got potential. You, you will go to Ireland and, and make new connections, be introduced to that ecosystem, um, be able to even raise additional funding or even have access, gain access, not just to the market in Ireland, but even to the broader EU market. So we're looking for startups like that. And then um, the other comment, I think I, I picked it here in terms of, um, uh, I think it's from uh, Matenjoa, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm scrolling down, uh, from Tando to say, what are the key factors uh, that must appear on a pitch deck? Remember, while in the finalist round, you will make verbal uh, oral presentations. But to get to that point, you will be assessed based on paper. So what you have between your startup and the team of, of, of selectors is your submission, paper-based submission. So you really need to put your best foot forward. Do give as much detail as possible, ticking all those um, things that actually have been asked, if you know, in the application form. I've mentioned, go through the website again. If you go through the Irish Tech Challenge website, you know, there's quite a number. You can also download the frequently asked questions because it will clarify some of the uh, questions that were asked here, some of the questions maybe that we have not really covered here in terms of like uh, what sector. Um, even this question of post-revenue, pre-revenue, what does it mean? They, we've, we've, we've tried answering that to preempt to say, this is what, what it means. Um, so I'm saying um, also spend time on that website, go through, pick up in terms of what this challenge is about and align to the objectives of the challenge. Focus, is there innovation? Um, uh, is, 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 are, are you solving? Uh, the United Nations SDGs, um, is there potential for global expansion, for example? Um, and are you overcoming challenges, uh, global scalability, local scalability, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what we're looking for. Um, so I'm saying spend time on the website as well, get some pointers from there in case we have not covered everything. Thank you, Hungry. Paul, maybe you can also comments there just thanks i'm going to add to what edward said just in terms of feed it might be helpful for people who are thinking about applications some of the feedback maybe on last year uh last year's 150 or 200 applications that came in and um, those who did well uh last year to got through to the rounds and then obviously successful and obviously there were some who did well but didn't ultimately make the five they did well partly because they spoke to all of the things that Edwell uh, mentioned, but they had a clear rationale for why this program was going to benefit them. Why this specific program, not, not any program or any international program, but why specifically? So the internationalization, why was that central to their, uh, to their business? Why is this the right time to look at international? Why do they need to go and build international links and markets? How is that going to help them? And then specifically Ireland, appreciate that, you know, you don't have to have a PhD in Ireland, you can have tech economy, but a bit of research about Ireland, what is specifically in Ireland you think might be useful? Are there kinds of, you know, businesses, 
sectors, uh, stakeholders in Ireland you might have identified already that you think you want to reach. Uh, those ones who were able to speak to some of those points did quite well. And the ones who did less well maybe were a bit more generic in their pitch. And uh, there wasn't really much mention of why Ireland. Uh, and then also on the SDGs, exactly as Edwell says, you know, um, it just you know ultimately these are this is commercial enterprises but what is it about your tech solution that is going to helps to contribute to addressing the big challenges um and i would also say just a pointer as well that you know this isn't just about the south african entrepreneurs learning from and drawing down expertise from ireland but actually um how do you think your tech solution is going to find an interesting audience in, in Ireland? Because I would say, Elmarie, you know, in your case, um, you guys brought an interesting innovation that maybe wasn't already existing in Ireland. And so that's that's core part of this program as well, is you're bringing innovations and ideas from, from South Africa, from the global south, that could find an audience and a market in Ireland. So hopefully those are some pointers that might um, might help um, might help people as they think about their application. Thanks, Hangui. Um, thank you very much, Paul. Um, yeah, I see. Well, you did respond on the chat around the 29th to the 6th of October. Yeah, so that's what we'll do. Um, make sure that we respond to it by that week. Um, we are also screening them as they come starting this week as well. So please definitely do make your application. Um, and we are at the end of our session today. But if there's a burning question that you have that you haven't put on the chat, maybe that you've been shy to tell us with your mic unmuted, please. This is uh, the last call. Like clockwork, Vuyo Pakat. Giving you a uh, Thank minutes. you guys. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, my question is really, because we've already applied, my question is, where or is there a way to give further updates because we're still getting traction as we go along so is there a channel to provide updates with regards to traction or communicate some of that stuff um, i know it may not or it may help the application process or consideration from the committee but yeah i just wanted to know if there's in a, in a channel where there's provision for us to constantly make updates with regards to some traction that we're gathering Yes, so definitely email Irish Tech Challenge at simulohome.joburg for additionalities. We will cross reference with what you've already submitted if need be. Yeah, but that can help. Um, so thanks for that question. And maybe to Kafi's question on how many we're anticipating over 100, 150 applications, and we're already more than halfway there. So we are looking for as many as possible. Um, because there's all the other opportunities that the partners who are part of this program can also utilize. So it's not just ending here. There's also um, through passes that we can give to other programs as well, but also definitely do not be deterred by the number. We want you to apply as much as possible. So that would help. Um, this sort of concludes our session. Uh, so thanks everybody for, for joining. But um, I would like to give the last word to the stakeholders, maybe some joined us in the last minute, to just uh, do a final call. I think the best person to do this is probably Edwell or Paul. Uh, I want someone to galvanize this, uh, the, the participants here to definitely apply. So I need strong language that can uh, convince them. Uh, Vuyo, I see you've, you've put your hand up again. Is it another question or is it the same question? Just one more, just one more question. Sorry, uh, I, I'm sorry. I should have actually burned these questions earlier on. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to get a bit of detail. I don't know if I'd missed, but what the, the what the program itself entails. Um, yeah, what does it look like throughout the actual program in itself? Um, yeah. Well, do you want to respond to that and then add the final galvanizing call to action? Was that for me or Edwell Angui? Um, no, no. So, sorry, Angui, I was, I, was, I was on the chat. Uh, there's somebody who had sent me a message and I actually responded wrongly to say how many um, per startup will go to Ireland. It's on, I think Paul did cover to say it's only 1% per startup. Um, if the startup feels strongly that there are two or three co founders that want to, to go, I think it will be the cost. Now, then it has to be covered by, by the startup. What are we looking at taking? 
one person uh, per startup. I, I think um, Paul will have the last word. Um, I, I think from my side is sometimes you look at the number, like the question to say, okay, how many applications are we looking at? Last year, Paul did mention that it was almost 200. Uh, so far, I think I can confirm Hungary we have, I think, have we crossed 50 applications. Yes. How many applications do we have? So, yes, so we've already crossed. crossed 50 applications so far. So there is a number of applications that will come through. And I think from a lot of programs, definitely we will have at least a minimum of 100. But um, we didn't touch it directly, but this is more like even a three-year project where there is the first year that the five and then there is the other year. But we we'll also take this as a developmental approach, you know, in the, in the startup support ecosystem, you may be part of a program this year, but from your submission, I, I, I pick up and I take note, which is a challenge, I think, to most of the ecosystem enablers to say, people do apply, they do their submissions. Um, do they get feedback? Which now is a matter of, I think, resources. But I think we may try and do something to say we provide feedback, which is more like developmental that will help you to iterate, make any changes that you need to make, considering maybe in the, uh, the, the, the 2024 challenge, for example, or even other, other pro uh, programs. But I'll say, put your best foot, um, give us a challenge. But I've seen quite a number of, uh, of startups that I've seen here, the individuals that I've seen here, I've met quite a number of you in different programs. I know it's going to be extremely competitive, which is it's a good problem to have. Um, and, 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 and I think um, with that number, remember that the broader picture is to have startups that will come from South Africa, supported by the Embassy of South Africa, that are solving local challenges, and then are able to export those solutions to the rest of the country, to the rest of the continent, and even the rest of, uh, of, 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 of the globe. That, that's what we, we're looking for. So thank you so much. Over to you, Paul, to have your closing remarks. Thanks, Edwin. I'm just, I'm still looking at Kahe's uh, point about staying in Ireland. I mean, uh, seriously, you know, yes, there's opportunities to start a visa opportunities, uh, work permit opportunities, and some people look at founding and uh, putting a founder in Ireland or putting uh, their sort of, um, uh, their IP in Ireland. I just want to say like, you know, there's a very welcoming environment in Ireland, but of course this program is about building up capacity in South Africa, but it's for the entrepreneurs then to look at their options. Um, one, as was second last point is, people will tell you about Ireland, it's always raining and it's always cold. Don't believe them, we do get sunshine. Uh, we our, our climate's a little bit like Cape Town. Yes, we get more showers, but I can guarantee you that the warmth you will receive indoors uh, in our, in our in, Irish people are extremely hospitable. We are, I always say, we are the most African of Europe. Uh, you know, we're the most welcoming, we're the most um, uh, familial and informal, and it's easy to connect us. So, so don't listen to people talk about the weather. Uh, on a more serious point, you know, uh, the people who come through our programs, this tech program, our fellowship program, often say to us, you know, I never thought this program was for someone like me. And I never thought there was always going to be someone better, someone better connected, and and yet that person made it through. So for the people I suppose on this call, you know, you can very much easily be that person who will make it through. Um, you know, we every application will give due consideration. We'll look for the benefits. We'll look for the positive in it. But but please remember, this is for someone like you. Uh, this this opportunity and your talent and your expertise, your ideas are part of what we want because we want to link Irish and South African uh, entrepreneurs, innovation, genius, ingenuity. So please apply and please remove that doubt. And uh, yeah, send in your application and we look forward to seeing some of you uh, later this year. Thanks very much. Andrew. Um, thank you everyone. So on the 23rd of September, when the box beat Ireland, remember that you can also apply to go to Ireland and celebrate in Ireland in Dublin the win that we are going to have in the World Cup. So that should also be <laughs> that should also be a reminder that we are asking you to apply, send it out, send hashtags on the 23rd of September, that Ireland is this Irish Tech Challenge opportunity as well. So with that said, guys, thank you very much. Um, and definitely hope that you guys all apply. And let's hope to see you guys grow and develop as SMEs, as tech businesses, as tech startups. And with that said, thank you very much.
Thanks, Angui. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Lovely. Thank you, Thank Angui. You, bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks bye. bye.